Hello and welcome back to another Demis Helen tutorial. Today we're going to look at side chaining options which give you uh, a little bit more control and it makes things sound a little bit more uh, less intense shall we say because if you're making uh, music and you want to side chain something you've kind of got all or nothing or you've got a little bit of control over the level of how the side chain works. You can use uh, Kickstarter to adjust how mixed in the signal is being side chained. Um, and that's as kind of as far as it can go. Now you can automate um, certain plugins. So you could automate your uh, EQ, for example, to cut out a certain frequency every time the kick hits and it triggers that frequency and just cuts it up and down. Uh, there's ways to do that and we could look at that in a future video, but I wanna look at a really, really simple way and whilst the plugins are still at a ridiculously low prices, we're going to look at um, SoundSpot's Evade and how we can utilize the uh, band selection features that it offers. So first things first, I'm just going to make a bass line here and I'm just kind of starting off a new synthwave track. So it might not go anywhere, um, but I'm just building the bass using uh, UHE's Tyrell uh, N6 here. So let's just quickly make that and then we'll head on into the tutorial. If you would like to skip straight to looking at Evade, you can click in the description to go straight to that point in the video. Okay, so this is the sound that we have currently. So nothing too fancy. So I'm gonna turn off oscillator two for now. And we've got a lovely saw wave. Yeah, and we'll keep it there. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the cutoff filter here and we're going to use the ADSR to obviously change how this works. So this is currently going to ADSR2, which is here. And let's just shape that and that and then mod one. Just turn that down. So we have a bit more control over the resonance. I'm just going to turn it down a bit. Okay, so we have the sound we want. Uh, it's a little bit high up, should we say. So instead of changing and transposing here, I'm just going to jump into the MIDI and just drop this one octave. Okay, so this, this bottom note is now a little bit too low. But that's probably not gonna matter. We'll just cut that out for now. We'll keep it in for now and it, this will help demonstrate actually later on when we use Evade. Um, so we're just gonna save that. Right, so we've got it at an octave lower and we've kind of got our filter set up here. down a little bit more. Okay, and then I'm just going to bring in the uh, second oscillator here. Just look and see which one sounds better. just influencing the sound and then in fact we could have the bass actually uh, using the sub thing here okay this will do for now um, so I'm just going to keep on shaping this till I can kind of get it to where I want here Keep it on chorusing. Can increase the speed, and the depth. So I just want a little bit of width to this, and this is typically how I approach a bass line. 
uh, for synthwave, kind of giving it that little bit of width in the sound, but at the same time kind of controlling the bass to stay some, somewhat in the middle, but it has a little bit of stereo detail thrown in there for good measure. Uh, it just helps things to sound a little bit thicker and nicer uh, towards kind of the end of the track building process. So I'm just going to turn the output up here. Uh, let's just look at the mixer. So we're looking at this one here. It's already at minus 12 gain. So I'm not going to shove the output to the full volume there. What I will do is we'll build this up using some inserts. And you can see I've already got a Vade on there to show you what's going on. But I'm still not happy with the sound there. It's it's kind of there. It's kind of there, but it's not poking through enough. sustain again. That's getting closer. Okay, we'll use that as the first bass line, uh, and then I'll underlie probably a Tal. In fact, we'll just do this now. Um, we'll use the Tal Uno LX, which again is pretty much the same as the uh, Tyrell from um, UHE. So on this one, we'll get rid of the bass notes and we'll just have... We'll just have that top note go in there. So I'm going to put Chorus 2 on and turn the sub off for a second, turn the filter down, envelope up. I just think this by far this has a nicer emulation. And we don't want that. In fact, we could keep that lower bass in there actually. Let's just keep that in there because that will help demonstrate. resonance on there just to give it a bit of character. And we'll copy them over because they were the same. Okay, and then the reason why that's overpowering, uh, if it let me click that, is we haven't set the pre-gain Okay, so the Tyrell is now giving me a little bit of power, and the Tal is giving me a little bit of old school in there, and I'll probably put some sort of tape saturation on there to kind of blend them together, that is usually a stage that I take. Um, and then we're just going to add a group track here, and we'll call this bass, obviously. There we are. And the two bases down here, I'm going to send through to groups. Base. Okay, there we are. So I'm going to throw Evade on there, and this is where we are going to start with Evade. So I'm just going to rename these, and then we'll get started. Okay, so they are now named and colour coordinated, so we can see a lot clearer what is happening. Um, I just want to address that the kick is coming from Metrum, and I've picked Room Kick 80s here from the pop and rock section so you can get a lot of these and it's one of the best uh, kind of drum manipulators that you can get out there. Kick 2 is good but I think this simplifies everything a lot further. Um, you could say it has a bit of a dated UI but what's to say that they can't update that in the future if they were going to. So um, now we've got the two parts set here what we want to look at is evade. 
Okay, so usually you could throw it on and straight off the bat, that is what it would sound like if you did side chaining with a standard compressor and using the kick as the trigger and you'd get that nice side chaining. You can use LFO tool, you can use Tal Filter 2, which is a free alternative. Uh, Evade, uh, I, I can't even remember what price this is at. I think it's at $8.95 or $2.95, something like that. And this will give you the options to isolate band areas. So what I mean by this is the two frequencies down here. So if you just kind of ignore everything on here, leave it as standard, and you can see the most power is happening here and that's what it's cutting out. So this bit here is not necessarily an issue to us. We might actually want some detail in this area where it's kind of faded the volume back in the bit you're hearing. So what we can do is we can drag these out. So I'll show you with the bass. We can introduce the bass back in so it's not actually cutting it off. So it's only side chain in this section, but the point is we've now kind of reached nearly the top peak where it's at full volume anyway, and it's not actually affecting the sound. And then as we bring it back in, you can actually hear the lower end is the kind of fundamental of the bass is just being let through and then it's kind of side chaining from the lower mids upwards and that's because we've set it to 133 hertz so it's still quite bassy that area or we can get rid of it totally and then we have our mix knob here so we could keep some of that warmth and just side chain it at 50 percent of the volume so it's kind of letting 50% of each pass through so 50% processed 50% the original signal but we don't want that we want it to be a hundred but we want to let signals pass through so we're going to do this with the top end so I'm going to bring this down to 5 kilohertz right, we could bring it a bit further let's bring it to 2 now let's bring it to 3 here okay so what we're doing is we're letting some of this signal pass through so anything above 3.1 kilohertz is going to pass through and the easiest way to hear that is when you're dragging this back and forth so what we can do is we can push this back now there's not much detail in this area so I will drag it down a little bit further now you can hear that it's got a little bit of drive it's, it's added some definition and character to it because it's letting some of the original signal pass through which is anything above this 1.2 kilohertz now you could add this effect in you could put a little bit of delay on there so the delay kind of gives you that extra bit of detail back into the mix or you could just simply do this which is actually isolating the frequencies so again if we remove this and we'll add it back in We've added that mid-range detail back in because it's not actually being side-chained. It's only affecting up to this point and then it's turning off. Very smoothly, but it's turning off and not giving it a chance to continue. And it just stops things starting to get cut out and you can give a smoother definition to your sound. So we could have it set there. So anything above 789 hertz is not side-chained. And we get a lot of definition in the bass, a lot of character, a lot of drive, it gives it some presence in the mix. does a lot of things straight away to add that in, as opposed to just having it set like this. It's just, it's, it's really invasive, and if you're not doing a really hard track, like say trance or hard trance or hard dance, whatever it might be, you might not want this result for your other sort of mixes. So let's just bring that back down to sub 1000 hertz. I like it around that area. So what that's doing now is just side chaining all the lower frequencies, the bits that actually cause you issues in your mix. And this, it, it's just a really big help. Now we've got the, the bass hitting on the first note here, as you can see, of each um, beat. And, oh, should we say bar? So the first notes on each beat in that bar and when we bring this one up we can actually reintroduce those and now we're only side chaining this section and we're letting a lot of the low end through now that it'll have its uses but in this particular instance I don't want any of that to be influencing 
especially sub 20, uh, sub 30 like hertz. I don't want that sort of frequency range in there. So looking at that bass now, we've got a lot more definition. So this is prior to sound spot and evade. And then this is with. And then prior to us reducing this, a very harsh sort of sound and that's where you'd be tempted to add another bass layer in and give it that definition or use some delay or use some EQ there's all different ways that you could approach it and it's just unnecessary especially if you're wanting to conserve CPU just whack on some evade let some of the detail through and you can keep it as real as possible to how the 80s would have sound because obviously they didn't have all the side chain they didn't have all this hardware and tech that we have now so to give it that more real feel but with a little bit of modern touch to it these will get you those results so that is looking at adding that in there like i said you can use eq um like if we just type in pro q3 here we can just take a section here and use it as a low shelf if it'll do there and you could technically automate this to go up and down and it's a legitimate way you have more control over that because then you could just duck a certain frequency range out so instead of just letting a whole section through from the top or from the bottom you could actually just isolate the boxy frequencies out so you get a really really tight sounding bass there's all different things that you can do and if you want me to cover that in a future video then let me know in the comments down below because that is something that I would be willing to cover in a tutorial for you um, however evade just it's just a really quick way around we've just developed that and that in the space of what 10 to 15 minutes and we've kind of got a nice sound where we can start progressing the track and adding some synth chords in there so I hope you found this useful and you can use it in your projects. Like I said, Evade is available in the Black Friday Cyber Monday sales still. Still a ridiculously low price and it's it's a really powerful tool. Uh, it's kind of put kick, uh, Kickstarter out of business for me. This is always my go-to. It, it looks nice as well. It's got that nice modern look like all SoundSpot plugins have. Uh, plus all the other features so if you haven't seen that video you can check that out on screen now to go and see a full review of what all these things do and how you can change the timings and stuff so you do get presets there as well so thank you very much for watching if you haven't already hit subscribe three videos per week and also drop a like and a comment and i will get back to you as soon as i can because i reply to all comments so thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next video